Amman battled through the pool, impressing but ultimately fruitless through five hard matches. Korea, former Olympic silver medalists, are seeking to hold a worst ever campaign at the Hero Asian Champions Trophy. A loss today to the hosts cap a tough year for a team whose World Cup hopes were halted 12 months ago. Fifth is the, host, the hope for both Amman and Korea as they step onto the Sultan Kamu's turf for the last time in 2018. It is of course semi-final day here today. The fifth sixth playoff though is our first concern. 30 degrees C, the weather, the humidity 45 and the stadium is the Sultan Kamu's sports complex. Amman winless at the moment. They ran out of legs against Japan. We're now going to go and hear from the career coach, Coach Shin. Coach Shin, your final match of this Asian Champions Trophy. What are you looking for from your team this afternoon? Yeah, this competition is not in up in the Korea team because it's a very short time prepare for and then a few guys, a new player, I, I expect to the experience in this competition. So we'll be target next year, June, hockey season final and then Olympic qualifying tournament. So today match is Oman. Uh, Oman team is uh, physical strong and sometimes very fantastic attacking, very quickly moving. So I know that it, but we will be pre we was prepared for the, the small small defense and sometimes full pressure in during the match today. So this competition, I hopefully in the happy finish. I expect to the I believe in the my uh, player. Well, I hope you have the happy finish. Thank you very much, Coach Chin. Thanks, Coach Chin. Thanks. Champions Trophy. It's been a difficult one for you in terms of injuries. Uh, what is or what have you said to the team ahead of tonight's game? Well, as you said, this is the last game, and uh, they have been trying their best so far in the patches. We, I have asked them to uh, let's show that we can keep this structure from the beginning till end. We need to play organized and uh, disciplined hockey, and we keep the, we need to keep the space as compact as possible. So. As we knew that Koreans are very speedy and uh, especially the counter-attack situations, they are very fast. So we don't have to allow them space. Let's see how they are going to put up together. I know injuries are part of the game, but you've had 14 outfield players for four of your five games, or five of your six games. How has that changed your look and view of the competition? Well, I think uh, as we are very, very well aware of the situation that nowadays hockey is a high speed ball circulation game and the physical fitness has become a very vital, uh, playing a very vital role uh, in the overall game aspects. So uh, playing with the 14 players, that is quite a challenge for us and especially uh, uh, my players because we, we missed most of the players in the front line. So we are trying to uh, 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 cover up things with our defenders. They, we are trying to uh, let them have experience to play as a forward. Somehow we are trying to manage and uh, the players, they start complaining because as now we jump into the uh, sixth game now, they were, uh, they were mentioning that they are having a little bit of tiredness in their body. But I told them still this is the last game and we have to be mentally strong and that's the only way we can uh, finish on a good note. Well, listen, I hope you get the performance. We'll talk to you later. Many thanks. Thank you very much, sir. Well, a little for Amman to take hope from the head-to-head. -head. Three wins for Korea. Of course, the 2013 Asian Cup, that was a 10-0 win. 2017 Asia Cup, 7-2 Korea won, although Amman scoring a couple there, and one of them was an absolute delightful goal from Al Krasmi. And then this week, 4-2 here in Muscat. Well, Korea were pushed by Amman in the pool. They'll hope to do the same again. Looking back to 2012 in the Here Asian Champions Trophy, Amman came fifth as they beat Japan in that fifth, sixth matchup. They will hope today to get as good a result this time, though, against Korea. Here come the two teams. Amman, 33rd in the world. They are in the red on the left hand side. Korea, they are currently 14th in the world, uh, 19 spaces above their opponents. Neither team has qualified for the World Cup in Bogonesh right in 2018, which started just over a month's time. Both will be hoping to finish off their 2018 campaign. Two teams who are developing 
Korea looking to get back into the world lead and Oman looking to break through into the upper echelons and the top 30 and of course the top 20. Tahir Zaman has had a tough time with Faitawad and Al Shaibi out. We'll now have the national anthems of both teams, Oman and Korea. time in this here Asian Champions Trophy of 2018 we hear the national anthems of Korea and of course the host team who have enjoyed playing host to the other five teams in this campaign Kim Jae Hyun well he starts once more for Korea relied upon in this competition Lee Sung Il will captain the Olympian scored a stunner against India Young Jin Tael who scored earlier in the campaign and Cho Sok Hoon up front 4-3-3 for Korea one to watch is the captain Lee Sung Il. He, well, he beat Trijesh. All ends up in that India match, roofing the ball from the slap. The captain has 191 caps to his name. He uh, has four cards, including two yellows, in the competition. So he needs to be careful of his discipline. But he has, of course, also a penalty corner threat alongside Jack and for a man, Farhad Al Nafali. Absolutely superb for them in this competition. Al Raisi and Al Luan, who got injured in the last game, the centre back partnership. Al Saidi has 110 caps to his name now. Quasmi, Al Shibli, and Al Fazari up front. Well, I think it's fair to say they need to start to link up a bit better. Aman 4 3 3. Simon Mason, the one to watch for Aman today. Fahad Al Nafali has been absolutely outstanding. He's needed great positional awareness because his defence at times have gone a little bit AWOL, but. He's been solid on both sides of his body, both hands and feet dives very well to cover the goals and he's had to have exceptional speed off his line, done very, very well in challenging circumstances. Cameron Hassan is the umpire on the left hand side, Nanan is the, the umpire on the right, Cameron ha Hassan from Pakistan and Anand from India and Nazmi Kamaruddin, the video umpire who will be overseeing all referrals. Well, Aman in the red are going to get us underway, it's the earliest start of the whole competition. A man who injury ravaged through this competition. Have they got the fitness to outrun career once more? Well, to be honest, Dan, I think they'll struggle. They've been brilliant in early quarters of pretty much every match. They've held teams to just a goal or two, but with that lack of outfield depth, they've really struggled in the later stages. And you can only see this becoming being something similar 
because the Koreans physically have scored, I believe, half of their goals in the latter quarters of game. So they'll certainly be up for it till the final whistle. It's a very close run thing in the pool stages, but Korea pulling away with some superb threat from penalty corners. Aman have an early run into the D. It's pulled back towards Al Quasmi, but doesn't find a foot off any Korean player. Left hand, the right hand side. Wang wanted the ball in the centre, didn't get it. The ball doesn't find a weight down the right from Jack Jonkyun. Well, in that attack, Rashad Al Fazari trying his best to get something moving, but you've got to feel that maybe he's struggling and carrying some kind of injury as well because he wasn't able to get back defensively in any way, shape, or form. You could suggest that maybe he's just conserving his energy, but just looked heavy legged in the middle of the pitch now. May have been great with his defensive duties, but certainly didn't seem to be an immediate change of pace to get back and help. Goalkeepers always criticise forwards for that. Work back, don't they, Simon? That's a long corner to Korea. Yeah, because you just want to go one way. You just want to score <laughs> the goal. You're not interested about stopping them. <laughs> it's all about the glory. Lovely little aerial from the long corner. Over to the left-hand side where the drag from Yu Sung Ju. It's against the Amani player and a restart for Amani. I just feel the intensity in this game just 15, 20% lower than other days at the moment. Both teams after a rest day yesterday. Ball from Farley, who has played very well for Oman in this competition. Well, the problem is down is I don't think Oman have got any intensity left in their legs. They have to manage this very, very cleverly. If they went out and tried to play toe to toe, with the Koreans, they're going to get torn apart. They need to stay compact. Something that Tahir Zaman has tried to get them to do through the course of this competition, stay tight together, know who's off each other's shoulders. Lovely step over there from Kim. Huang Tail can't find a way past Nafali, who has really been one of the stars of this Oman team. Lee sung il so much experience for him for Korea. And that's something that Korea, no doubt, as they do push towards, of course, the Olympic qualification for Tokyo. And then probably more realistically, four years later, 2024, they'll be looking to use the experience to develop the youngsters that are coming through. One corner to Korea once more. Korea cleverly looking at the numbers that Amana are putting into the press in front of them and then throwing their own teammates forward. Quite often when a side sits deep and the opponent then struggles to break them down because they, th they, they don't simply count and work out who you can throw th forward through the lines. Jin couldn't hold on to the ball down the line. And there is the head-to-head. -head. No wins for Amman thus far. As I said, though, they did win the fifth and sixth place playoff against Japan back in 2012. Their best ever finish, looking to avoid sixth place again in the competition. Sungil with Al Kazmi just currently doing a shoelace up on the left hand side of the pitch, and he'll hope the ball doesn't come to you. It does, but Al Kazmi's back with two laces tied. Fortunately, within good time, because you had just sunk in field slightly. If the ball had come to him earlier, he would have been running straight at the head of the circle uncontested. So, Neil, aware of the low intensity, half court from Oman at the moment. Out to the left hand side, picked up by Lee Jung Jun. You, nice ball inside, good ball pace, and then the attempted pass from. Kim Seong Kyu was misguided. Well, Kim Seong Kyu trying on that backhand. Yes, it, it didn't get where it needed to be, but what was vital and will be vital for Korea is it's the rotation through midfield. Originally, Yu started out on the left, drove the ball in, dropped it off, carried on running. If they can keep a midfield rotation, it will pull Oman's defence into areas that they don't want to be, and the channels will then open up for them. Luan, who Seems to pick up a nasty injury against Japan in the 5 0 loss. Wang turns the ball over. Height for Korea here down the right hand side. Cho had 
made himself available on the baseline. Kwan can't keep the ball in play. There's two semi-finals to come. Malaysia, Pakistan and India versus Japan. Simon, what would your predictions, what's your gut feeling on those two? Well, the games that come up, you've got to put money on India to start with. Anybody who likes a flutter needs to put India on uh, money on India. They've been they've been so good. They've they've dominated pretty much every game that they've been involved with, and they have such a depth of talent. I think the Pakistan Malaysia one is a, is a much more interesting contest. For me, from a tournament perspective, I'd like Pakistan to win because I then think we'll see full stands tomorrow. The crowd was fantastic in that exchange earlier on. There's some history there. But Malaysia have got a lot of threats across the pitch. A very difficult game to call. And a go with Pakistan, though. So Pakistan, India in the final. Alawan picks up for Oman, then does very well to lead Hayun, who gets the ball back quickly. And now there's a chance to create. Out comes Al Nafali. Quick off his line to clear away. And you mentioned it. The highlighting of him earlier is how fast, not only how good his shot stopping has been, but how fast he does come off his line and they're aware of the threat. Now, Aman very nearly. Al Nofli had the chance, but Kim picks up for career. Cuts back, little support, tries to go through Al Lawati. Jin has to take it five. It was Al Nofli five? I'm, I'm not, not sure. sure. No, didn't look like it at all, did it? <laughs> as soon as he did that, Cameron is saying the umpire suggested he was, but at no point did it look like that Al Nofli was five yards. Now the play's already gone on here as the ball gets fired in hard for the far post. Opportunity for Oman missed. No real commitment from Hyun Yi Wang on that back post. Doesn't really see it till late. Picked up quickly by Nofli, who had to be very alert. Again, Iguan getting in there. Play down, Al Nafali with the aerial ball. Rashad just turns away, but the lunge at the ball from Yu Sung Duke was enough to put him off. Dan, just moments ago, you were talking about that clearance kick by Al Nafali. And what, he, what he's been doing really well is the power he's getting on his clearances because his, his defense do go walk about quite a lot a lot of ball gets to him but he's able to drive the ball clear so it doesn't drop for the opponent in this instance career to get second phase if you compare that for anybody who's been watching the games to imran but for pakistan just the other day a ball that came into the circle he didn't really make a decision and the cross kick popped it back to the top of the d and malaysia should really have got a goal out of that but really positive, aggressive goalkeeping from Al Nafali. Now the chance for Aman to come forward. By Tarmid is up in the D. Al Luan, sorry, Al Saidi. Take the ball down the right hand side towards Al Shibli. Who gives away a free hit and sideline ball and wasted by the team in red. Al Shibli, I, th I think he felt that he touched it once the ball had gone over the sideline, but it was nowhere near. It's that. Lack of experience, the ball's running away from you. you see, if I let this roll another six inches, then guaranteed possession, as opposed to trying to trap it. Here come. John, John Woo into the D, it goes. Free hit going. Amman's way, Al Nofli gets them going quickly, and then down the right hand side. It's still a very warm day. Well, very clever defending from Al Nofli. He knew it was a 50 50 contest, and that if he set himself, he could take the hit from behind with Kun Yi Guang coming into that space behind him and he did and he set himself rode the challenge and just dropped and drew the free hit again sometimes better than trying to trap that ball clean in the middle of your own circle so the sun not completely gone down here yet it's the earliest start time we've had in the competition which may affect the pace in the game as well it's just shy of 30 degrees here in Muscat this evening Fancy being a goalkeeper here in Muscat. In these, in these conditions, I wouldn't fancy being any player at all. I mean, particularly this game, which started so much earlier. When we got here for the start of the afternoon, the sun was still out on the pitch and it was brutally hot. Break on the foot, Jiguan. Player ahead of him is Young Jin. Up to the right hand side. Really poor pass, though, for Lee Jung Jin. Career have the ball in the D. And again, Al Nafali out brutally quickly, and Aman now can break by Tarmid. 
pops it inside to Al Shibley. He has to slow things down as his options were reduced to Al Awati. Have to get the ball through to bite arm. It doesn't go. This is a brilliant piece of goalkeeping, not relying on the defenders. A big right hand across, punching at it with the back of that right hand deflector. Gets a touch in front as well, so it has to be red. Well, it's a stick there. I'll give the guy credit. I thought he'd gone with his deflector because it's a bigger surface area. Absolutely middles it out the top of his D. Sunil down the line, picked up by Jung Jun. Clear cross Al Nofli. Battle between the two. 50 50. There comes away with the ball, Kim penalised. Yeah, we had a different angle on that than the umpire from up here, and it looked like Al Nofli was just holding his arm and his stick across his opponent. Career a little hard done by, but it's all about angles and perception. Shibley, long ball, crashed in and very nearly. For Al Kazmi, it was a bouncing ball. Al Kazmi nearly had his first goal of the competition. We were right down that channel as that was played in, and you saw Al Kazmi move, didn't you? Across by there, he pops into the space. That's the channel we were on. All he needed was a little inside edge. And with Kim already moving out the channel, relatively straightforward touch into goal. Scored against Korea in Dhaka. Which was absolutely unbelievable running at full tilt and then just sweeping the ball over the top of the goalkeeper, lobbing him from the top of the deep. It really was an amusingly good goal, I think you would describe it as. Yeah, we talked about, we talked about the, the athleticism and the physicality in the men's game increasing year on year, and it definitely has, but what always amazes me is the dexterity seems to get better whilst the physicality does. You would think if it got more aggressive, suddenly become brutish and a bit blunt but actually the skill sets in the men's and the women's games are just developing at the same rates and beautiful touches the slow ball pace down to Xiong Ju and then Young Kin cross it goes Wang can't get a touch Jang tries to put pressure on Al Shaibi into the D once more career threatening now Reverse stick, swing and a miss, and it's touched in at the back post. I think the final touch came off Kim Yung Jin. There he is, just tapping it in at the back post. No doubt he'll claim it as any good forward would. One nothing career. Yeah, it's scrappy. It pops in, pops across, and gets touches on the back. as a little loop in. Doesn't get any kind of clean contact. Huang Taeil in, in the end in front of the goalkeeper. That's a real poach just to nick it across the line. That's the touch there, the top edge from Tai Il that takes it over the top of Al Nafali and then touched in at the back post. Not dangerous, it's so slow and looping. Anybody can play at that. Hang Tai Il will be claiming the assist there. Young Jin gets the goal, the touch on the back post. Gonna be there to score them. One nothing career, one minute 48 to go in the first 15 minutes of play here. There's hockey now. International level four 15 minute quarters. Alawati scored against Pakistan. A beautifully worked penalty corner right at the end of it. 8 1 loss for Amar. Going back to those causes, there's conversations around the rules, board, and circles at the moment. They're going about whether our whole game at every level should be changed to the same format in terms of the quarters. Certainly a strong argument for it, so we don't get lots of different formats across levels and across the world. Kazmi drops the ball inside. That's better link-up play between him and Al Fazari. Oh, slightly sure. greedy, but gets clattered in a penalty corner for him. Well, a corner's been given. You've got to say, though, is this... What's it, uh, yeah, it's the lift-up, to be honest, in the end from Lee Shung hoon who's pulled up in the tackle, watch the body position there. It's just leaving your stick in, gets caught between the feet of Al Fazari as he's accelerating. So the old stick seem to be dangling in there at the same time. A card given. 
Maman for their corner routine. They've mistrapped more than any other team in this competition. Top edges popping away. Just need to get it out and stop dead. Give themselves a chance. I'll show you the right hand side. It'll be Al Nafali. Goal. Fantastic finish. Bottom left hand corner. Power from the big number eight. We've seen how powerful he can be in open play. He actually set up the goal for Al Lawati on the spin the other day and now scores against Corinth. Out and stop dead is what we said he needed, and that's a brilliant finish. It's not the best bit of goalkeeping. Goalkeeper's gone up before he goes sideways. Can't get his stick down, doesn't drive a right hand through, but that's a long, slow, slow, quick drag, exactly the right format. Powerful enough to twist the stick in the goalkeeper's hands. Brilliantly executed, three-stage, out, stop dead, drag. He scored against Malaysia in a 7-1 loss at the Asia Cup in Dhaka 2017. Goal here against Korea, and well, you questioned whether Amman would have enough today. They've definitely got enough passion for this one. They are back on level terms very, very quickly indeed. Korea only ahead for around about one minute worth of play. Korea have got to move the ball on faster. That opportunity there in the middle of the pitch, Kim Seong Hyu just dwelling on it, allowing Al Luati to probably run 10 meters to get on top of it, to deny that easy ball into the circle. Jin, looking for some ill. Poor ball pace for Oman at the back, putting the goal scorer under pressure. That's where they've got to help themselves, help each other. And there goes the end of the first quarter. The whistle goes, the hooter goes. Well, Oman have fought back here. They were one nothing down. A goal from Young Jin at the back post for Korea. But then the penalty corner was given from outside the circle. Al Nafali put it in the bottom left. It's Korea 1, Oman 1. Well, let's hope, let, have a look at how that first 15 minutes of play went. Korea had a lot of strong and healthy possession. Jin getting the touch to make it 1-0. Classic anti-skill for Wang Tail. He's tried to volley this over the goalie. He's top-edged it. Al Nafali getting his body in the right place. It just falls kindly for Korea. It wasn't the cleanest strike. This, however, was a penalty corner. Out, stopped on an absolute dime in long drag. Pulls all the way through. Look at that. That's the slow drag to start with that you can then rip through, rotate the hips, pass the goalkeeper. Too hard. 1-1, one, one. shots one apiece, both have gone in. Circle entry as well, Korea have been in the Omani circle three times more than Oman have been in the Korea circle, but they scored from it. Possession, 78% in Oman's half for Korea. Oman have had the only penalty corner. Well, the first person back out onto the pitch is Farhad Al Nafali for Oman. Everyone else still in the huddles, and what will the uh, coaches be saying? Al Nafali's obviously heard enough. Well, to hear Saman will be saying to him, get back in your goal, keep doing what you're doing. <laughs> because that's all he needs to do. Let's not overcomplicate the goalkeeper's job. Stop the little white thing going in big netty thing. The rest of the team in front of him, however, have to stay nice and compact. They have to keep the shape as best they can. The danger is if they step out and attack and get the space to counter-attack, I'm not sure they can come back in again. So we'll probably see them attacking in twos and threes. For Korea, however, I really think Shin has got to get more intensity from his midfield, more rotation through the front two lines. Korea taking a long time to set up here. They are just about back in time. Away we go. It's won all the second quarter of this fifth versus sixth place playoff here in Muscat Amman. First time that the Hero Asian Champions Trophy of Hockey has come to this part of the world. Wang Tail takes a ball in the arm and Al Nafali immediately comes across and apologizes for lifting the ball at him. You. Straight across the pitch to Sung Il. Balls down the line in towards Young Jin, who now has it, the goal scorer. We again have the ball inside the 23. Jack. He definitely is a threat from penalty corners for Korea and then Young Jin. Just takes the ball off the end of the pitch. 
Oh, just moments ago, as Oman won that ball back in that left-hand defensive pocket, their inexperience showed because as they got it, they just tried rather than trying to pull it back into a stance and force it onto a foot to win a free hit and therefore retain possession, they just reversed it off the sideline. And the thing is, at this level, that's coming back at you in two seconds' time. So they need to just get the ball in pockets and realise they don't have to play it away. They don't have to be cute. They just have to be wholly professional, keep the ball for as long as they can. Samuel. Got back quickly from the midfield where Seong Kyu found his captain once more. Career playing keep ball at the moment. Not much pressure on the Mal Shibli. The nearest man now to Seong Hoon has a lot of space to run into. Al Nofli realizing he needs to shut the door slightly too late. Huang Tail. Seong Hoon. Quickly in from Al Quasmi, which with what can only be described as a forwards tackle in the extreme, although he did take it with his shoulder in the mouth there. Yeah, forward tackle or agricultural, that's another word. As he comes around the back, it's just a reaching tackle, and then it's head-to-head. -head. Fortunately, it's just headband from a Korean perspective. But it's this reach round as the ball's gone past, then trying to get in. You could suggest there was a stick put between the ball, but a player is allowed to rotate to create the spin and the obstruction. So Korea's first penalty corner, and as previously mentioned, they have definitely got firepower from this. Sung Il has stepped away, leaving Jang Jong Kyun. Well, he scored a stunner just the other night. Goalkeeper's top right, top left as we look offensive. Top right in this picture here. Looking from the top of the D, the top left ripped round. It likes to pull it across his body. You on the right hand side. Who will it come to? Well, you walked forward, and it will be you. Drops it back to Jan. Still danger though for Oman. And then they get the free hit. They can't go quickly because the umpire is checking the Amani player who's down injured. Yeah, unfortunately it was a stick pulled through. Really good. The save on the line from Al Luan. Out to the top. Good slip routine, then low flick. And he does very, very well to just get across it. But as he closes down here, watch the stick come through second phase. It's just wrapped him on his right knee. Clever routine. Stop nice. The beautiful cushion into the stance. And then the long drag. But the postman, Al Luan, stepping across and clearing. And then following, gets his mask off in the process as well. A bit of awareness. And the Farley Al Nofli steps over. The Korean player was ahead of the game there. Kim Seong Kyu misses out on possession. And oh, Al Fazari, that could have gone either way. Well, Lalit for India scored one against Korea in similar fashion. Takes an edge. He's towed it the wrong way, unfortunately. Try to take it down. It's just in, an inside edge. The Asian games it was that Lalit, an aerial ball which he just deflected past the goalkeeper. Well, that could have gone either way for Al Fazari. Instead, a useful clearance for Korea. It's 1 1. Korea had the lead. Oman fighting back around the Farley's penalty corner. You. Picked up by Cho into the D. Shoots wide. Well, that's better from Korea. Single line elimination, pops it through, then cuts across. But it's that lateral move. Yeah, OK, he's swung at it too hard. Too much right hand, pulled through it past the far post. But it's that movement, pick, eliminate, drive. It's just too tentative at times from Korea. There isn't that real aggressive first, what, one or two metres of acceleration that we'd like to see from them. Samuel picks up the aerial ball and Korea once more jank, showing his experience. Rather annoyed at Alouan there, who just tapped the ball away. And now Jang's even more annoyed because Korea have been told to move it back, which seemed a little bit uh, over the top. Yeah, you can understand why Jang's annoyed, absolutely. I get that completely, but that's for the umpires to control if they feel that Aman are, get, are breaking play down illegally then they're the ones who are going to have to control it from Oman's perspective they want to break every, all of this down they want to keep it as tight and as messy as they possibly can for as long as they can to give them those chances later in the game We're talking of Messi Seong Il not finding the pass that he wanted and Oman don't have to break it down that time because Korea did it for them 
on the one. He's a stocky fellow at the back. He's defended very well this week. Seems to be okay after his injury in the final pool game. That's the sort of pass they don't want to make. That's a that's a 40-yard slap ball against a set defence. <laughs> You're never going to go through that at standard club level on Saturday afternoon, never mind at international level against athletes who can move fast enough. There has to be a lateral transfer before that length of pass is made. He wants the ball on the left-hand side. He decides to go back to his captain, Lee Sung-il. Lee Sung-hoon will get it this time, but he knew Al Quasmi was there and that put pressure on him. Now Al Quasmi has the ball with three Korean players around him and Lee Sung-hoon goes barging through Al Lawati. Again, good awareness from players. Alawati knowing that the challenge was coming in hard and fast. Therefore, if you just hold your body shape, you take that impact and win the free hit. And they need that early, sorry, easy possession. Ball's fallen now, though. Here comes the goalkeeper for Korea, Jae Yeon. Here's the weight and Kim Chong Jin. Poor oh, hit from him. Alawati, players ahead of him by Tarnid. Good skills from him, and then an excellent tackle from Ki Hoon. He had to make an excellent tackle because otherwise Bai Tarmid was on his own. Now Korea can break. Not many players, in fact, no players ahead of play at all. Al Shaibi comes in to collect and wins the free hit. Very unusual from Korea at any stage in a tournament. If we look at how they developed their hockey in the first instance, it was all about athleticism. It was all about picking the best athletes and getting the high intensity play. In that play, they counter-attack, but nobody from the back six has committed. Zari puts pressure on Jai Hyun. Once more, Al Fazari has the ball. Long corner given. 2000 Simon you would have played in the Sydney Olympics where Korea took the silver medal they were a slightly different team back then oh, they were they were incredible I've never seen anything like it physically we at one stage we did a training session and we, we were warming down and when we started the warm down the Korean team come out and this is in the tournament and they were running on a whistle around the pitch and they were running sprint lengths across the pitch up and down and up and down they did it for an hour Wholly orchestrated mid-tournament, unbelievably fit. Farley does well not to give away a penalty corner there. Show across it goes. Alna Farley watchful again and 16 coming. Oh, as we roll in here, and he goes on the back end, it's played in the goalkeeper again, policing that area. A couple of players suggesting they thought it was dangerous. The ball was miles away when they reacted in the end. It was outside the D by then. Again, driving through. Yes, that time the body weight was a little bit backwards, but that's because he's had to accelerate his right kicking foot forwards. Poor ball. Al Nofli ran across to get it. Couldn't get there. Al Lawati could. He's under pressure and plays it off the right foot of Kim Kyong Jin. Now the break on for Marwan. Has he got anyone in there for him? Brilliantly picked up by Lee Sung Il experience showing for him well, that experience and you spoke at the top of the program alawati with the break al quasm is behind him the shove in the back and it goes against him on career ball well oh, there's an obstruction perceived by anan and there's a sly grin watch the carrying position is that there? It's just the backside rolling in. Al Lawati putting his body in the way. You can just see it. That's a good read. It's a superb read from Baranan. Oh, the fractions. It's so close. But there has to be, now that the ball is carried in such difficult positions to affect tackles, I, I've got a real problem with how players carry it outside their left hand side. But as soon as, to me, the shoulder or the hip advances past the ball, it makes it impossible to tackle and therefore obstruction. And the father drilling the ball into the player, but missing it. He tried to. John Kuhn. To you. Quickly moves it to the right hand side. John Kuhn. 
Sion Kuhn. Sanad Al Fazari swings and doesn't quite miss. <laughs> doesn't quite miss, but takes the top off the ball on the backhand. He's absolutely hit that back sticks. We would have got it anyway, but wow. He's just not falling for career, is it? Every single ball that's coming in. Now by Tarmid. You that's see there again, that just has to be, yeah. Blocking the ball away from the defender. Absolutely right, both of those. I think has done really well. Look at the ball count there. He's left it by his back foot. There is no way the defender can make that tackle because the forward's body shape is obstructing. And you can see immediately when a player doesn't back their own pace. Yeah. <laughs> if he backed his pace, it would have been out in front and gone. Al Quasmi, does he back his pace? Well, that is a superb tackle from Yu Sung Ju. Backed his pace or not, he didn't have a choice on that occasion. Well, if everyone wants to see what backing your pace looks like, there was a Spanish player called Paula Matt, who used to play on the left wing, play on the left wing, and he would pop out to the left hand side. And having done so, he would get the ball out in front of him and he would literally just go out to his left. You could keep the ball in front of him, keep the ball out in front of him, and he would happily just carry it out to one side, eyes up. Hill down to the right hand side. And in dives the Marnie player number 10, Marwan. The, the lights have gone off, Simon, here. Luckily, we've just about got enough light, but if it gets any darker, there may be a problem. On the Farley. So, this is where it's been fired. It's a good little defensive touch outside the left foot. But the umpires have blown to speak to the technical bench about the fact the lights have gone and whether they can still play in the light that is out there. And for Cameron Hussein, probably, well, definitely the right thing to do. Well, he's got to ask the question. Got to ask the question. It's pretty, I mean, we've got some shade, um, some tinting on our windows. Through the windows, it looks pretty dark. At this level, it is, we'll see what the decision is from the technical bench. Hussain comes across. You can see there, it's, it's basically dusk here in Muscat at the moment. Yeah, and the general play is OK. It'll be interesting on something like a penalty corner because it really isn't particularly clear, but the teams are coming back out. I'm assuming there that they've been told that the lights will be back on imminently. And as we look up, I can see one, two lights come on. So we should be... Hopefully just minutes away, sometimes the lights take a few minutes to, to warm up. Ball in. Al Nafali, poor clearance from him. No doubt he'll blame the lights for that. And then Amant get the ball. Well, they get away with it, but this ball in. We haven't got any sound, I don't think, on the actual replay. That's the bit where Korea give up possession. Prior to that, I thought it was going to come back to Al Nafali's kick, and you could hear the base of his shoe in the turf. You could hear the, the studs ripping through the fibres, which takes all the pace and the power off things. And the Farley, stick glowing in the muscat gloom. Orange handle of his stick. Aerial ball thrown in. And those lights that came on have now gone off again, so that could be more of a concern to the umpires. Al the Farley goes across to restart proceedings just checks with the umpire where he's meant to start from both teams still have their referrals the little green semicircles below the team's names on the screen indicate that two minutes uh, 10 to go to the end of the second quarter and Simon surely one of the things that the technical delegate would have said is with such a short time left until half time let's get there and then we can deal with everything from half time yeah, I agree completely. What I'm, I'm kind of hoping is that there isn't a penalty corner because it's that one set play with some real, uh, some real intensity in terms of the, the ball speed and the, the ball speeds that you get from the top of the circle, driving at the goalkeeper. And with, without enough light, it just makes it really, really difficult to pick not the ball first phase, but the, the intricacies of the disguise and the movement. That's what you read instinctively. If you can't see it clearly, it makes it really tough. Song Hoon down to Huang. 
who gets it back. Al Mafali further up the pitch than we've seen him. Al he gets eliminated quickly and then does what a tackle. <laughs> what a tackle. You might suggest all or nothing. <laughs> totally on his face. He's been absolutely done and then there. Dives in complete commitment. Fair play. Umpire Hussain sending career back to where he thought it was, but as he did that, the horn went to signal the end of the first half here, the end of the second quarter, and the score remains. Career one, Oman one. Some of the lights are coming back on. Hopefully they'll be fired back up by the end of half time. As Night starts to fall here in Muscat. You can see on that shot how dark it's becoming. The home team, though, are currently locked together with Career. It's Career 1, Oman 1 in the fifth, sixth player.
Welcome back to Oman, where the good news is that the stadium lights are coming back on. It is one all here between Korea and the home team Oman. As you can see from that graphic, Young Jin of Korea took the lead for them with a tap in at the back post. Oman immediately came back. Al Nafali in the penalty corner. And the goalkeeper, Farhad Al Nafali, has been working very hard in this first half to keep it that way. He has. He's been off his line well. He's dominated that area, what some coaches call the ugly zone, in front of his goal. He's done the best that he can. He couldn't keep them all out, though. Anti-skill in the end, undoing him as it's popped over his shoulder. He's anticipated a ball that's been played hard at him. It's here. He's thinking that's going to be smashed. He's stepped forward to try and block it with his body. Tail doing well to get a top edge over the top. And then Oman with their penalty corner. A perfectly executed, simple move. Out hard to the top, stopped well to get drag across the body. Good rotation. You see that stick coming out up over the left shoulder. Korea had their own, went for the slip. Well saved on the line in the end by Alwan, clearing it as they had a really nice smooth. Again, that cushion into the body, showing how the ball stopped, making it easy for Yang. But it's a flat ball, easily cleared. Then long ball through, it fell unfortunately, Amman weren't looking, goalkeeper comes sliding out with both pads, denying Oman in the end, but if, they, if the forwards had just been looking for that, they only needed one extra metre of pace, and a bizarre double knee slide, but no celebration. But it looked like Al Krasmi was looking to play the ball across as well, which was which is aware of him. Four shots to one for Korea. Circle entries, ten for Korea, just three for Oman. They won't mind, though. It's one all, and that, at the end of the day, is the statistic that's, that really matters. We're going to go down pitch side now, where, so where Charlie Broom has been talking to the coaches. To hear, you must be pretty happy with that first half performance, are you? Yeah, so far, so good. I think they are trying their best and they did not allow too much space inside the circle to Korean players and that was the plan actually and which we need to uh, strongly continue. Uh, the physical part is going to be very vital I believe in third and fourth quarter. I hope the boys can uh, cope up and sustain this uh, pressure. And finally you must be really happy with the way they responded going one down to come back to one all at half time. Yeah that's very positive and uh, as I said they, they keep on working hard because I, they knew that this is the chance for them uh, in home ground and home ground if they ne really want to notice their performance to the local spectators. Thanks to here. Thank you very much. Well, Farhad Al-Nufali has once again been a thorn in the side of the opponent, Korea. Have scored once. Well, you have a situation where it's not just about the saves he makes, it's the dominance in front of his goal mouth. Here we see him step forward and drive the ball away. The defence at times aren't as tight as you would like to see at international level. And he has to absolutely play probably a metre and a half to two metres higher than you would see goalies in other teams. Look how he drives through to deny the ball being deflected by Yu Hyang Yong. Well, the fans are in young and old beating the drums. Oh, he's definite percussionist, that lad. He's got drum drum and a cymbal, hasn't he? Yeah, absolutely. Great fun. He's having more fun playing with that than watching the hockey at the moment, the uh, youngster on the sidelines. But we are hoping that we're going to have a thrilling second half here, the last two quarters. The first two have been rather lower intensity. Coach Shin will be very much hoping that his team can pull through after a... First half that again, Aman have proved difficult to overcome. The lights are partially on here. The umpires deem them acceptable. And we're underway for the third quarter in the fifth place playoff of the Hero Asia Champions Trophy 2018. Now Noffley comes across immediately to clear up any danger. He's surrounded by two or three Korean players. Kim Sung Kyu steals the ball and wins the free hit. Yeah, third man obstruction as the ball was carried forward by Al Nofli. His teammate just didn't get out of his running line. In doing so, used his own body to shield the ball away from Korea. Just moments ago, though, when Al Nofli, you mentioned it, steps across the heart of his defence. Good vision, but just needs to not be doing that as best he can as Aman can see in an early corner. Because if he does continue that sideways running across the pitch, it leaves gaps that Korea can find elsewhere. 
David is in that bottom corner. Lovely little quick reverse pullback. Very, very sharp from Cho shuk -hyun. As he pulls that in, every player in the get there, they know there's not really very much else they can do on the reverse other than just pull it back into the stance of the defender. Simon, before half time, mentioned the light with penalty corners. Well, with not quite full lights on, about half, 50% of the stadium lights on. Al well, Nafali will have to face Yang. And Lee Sung Il will be Yang on the left hand side. Could save. Penalty corner straight away again. Al Nafali's offsetting slightly to his right hand side. Yang going to his favourite position down the right. That one actually, he's opened it up slightly down the middle, to be honest. Al Nafali stepping across with his left foot. But he doesn't drive through that. He just lets the ball hit his foot. Body weight slightly backwards. Core slightly weaker, and it rises the, raises the ball up into Korea. Multi corner goals against Malaysia and, of course, against Oman. Let's see number two for Jang. And this time it's wide, and it? 16 to Oman. It's not his favourite side of the goal. That is really, look, the stop is right outside the right-hand post. What they're trying to do is create an angle where they draw Al Nafali to the right-hand side of the goal, and then you can slide the ball across the face of the keeper. Because he's moving right, the ball's moving left, it often opens up that channel. But Yang just, does, just allows his wrists to open, and it just slides it too wide of that far post. Well, I'm going to put that Amani first touch down to a tired first touch because it was pretty horrible. Korea have the ball and they can continue to push Oman back in this early stages of the third quarter. Sung Il down the left hand side it went. Left alone by Kim Kyung Jin. Here's Kim Ki Hoon. He plays it down the line and then it's played into Al Shaibi, who I've seen masses of in this competition. He kind of goes about his business, the Amani number three. Although watching in, in practice the other day, useful drag flicker, keeps it low, lots of deception. Sung Il hasn't had a chance in the game so far though, Al Shaibi. Down the line it goes from Xiong Q. Cross crunched in, it flicks up off Huang and out of play it goes. Sideline ball though, so it came off an Amani play. Well, Al Nofli sells himself short, he was never going to get there to intercept, allowing Korea and the attempt at deflection was just half-hearted, just hung a stick out at it. Sung Il finds Sean Kuhn. And again, that time Al Nafali gets a better touch. Still rather throwing himself at the ball, though. That's a definite boot. At times it all feels just a little bit last ditch, doesn't it? It's a and this is where you can you can tell whether physically they're in the right shape because the first phase tackle might be okay but it's whether a player can get back to a second phase position if they miss that first touch I'm oh, trying right very. at the start of the competition brought five players into the squad due to injuries Rajab was one of them who dropped out who is a forward who tends to gel things together a bit up front Al Fazari now Kazmi haven't been able to quite make things tick as a pair here. Cho with the shot into Farhad. And Farley. Again, Korea can enjoy early possession. 13 times now into the deep for Korea in this match. Turn out by Lee Jong-jun. And then when Amar get the ball, only two players, maybe three, run forward. On the backhand, Cho chooses to go to the reverse. Goalkeeper does well, just a literally little jump. Gets his feet together, jumps at it, encouraging it to hit him, getting his lines right. As we see Al Shibli there, it was Al Shibli, Al Khazmi and Al Fazari who all race forward. Massive gap, they've now closed it, Amar, but huge gap between attack and the midfield. And they just need to be careful. That it's the communication that they really struggle with when they get tired, because if your three forwards run away from all of that, from, you, from your midfield and your defence, the sprint up is fine, but then if the opponent gets the ball and just pops it in behind you, you've then got a 50-yard sprint backwards again. So unless you can do it as a team, it's probably not worth doing it at all. The career were rather slow in there. Restart. Terrible down the line. Two 
Jones on the pitch. Farley, well, not exactly fast in how quickly he restarted. The ball pace also rather lethargic. al back to Al-Nafali, who's now under pressure from Young Jin, who strikes me as a forward who won't drop his intensity. Sungil, well, good from Al-Fazari. I thought he was going to get blown up for a stick tackle there, but managed to somehow keep going with the ball. al Nofli as he comes away. Oh, he's knocked that away. Karana saying, seen that. It's just, it's, it's a petulant little flick of the end of the stick. With Al Kazmi this week, what has struck me with him is he's almost been just in a bad mood from the word go. He hasn't scored yet, and I think that's fueling his mood on the pitch. Yeah, actually, to be honest, I think the captain, Al nofli has got away with that flick of the stick because Al Kazmi was going to get spoken to. So Cameron is saying the umpire is focused on that conversation and has missed the little tap of the ball away because if he'd seen it, it was probably, it was pretty obvious. If he'd seen it, I'm fairly certain it would have been carded. Well, the, forwards, the, the captain's got his forward to thank there. Young Jin, goal scorer for career, looking for a second now. Huang Taiil, who's looked lively today. Reversed it, cross it goes. Now Nufali was concerned enough to dive because Cho was coming in at the back post. Not quite up to a full. Oh, that's harsh. Lights. That's harsh. That was the first one was hand. Are they going to go to appeal on this? Why are they going to go to appeal? It looked like it hit the forearm. Can you check it's a foot or not? Jin is down Quite there. Not the the word with the okay, I'll show you foot. Okay. So the question was, can they see a foot in this passage of play? Originally, to me, it looked like it was hand. Oh wow, that's a good spot. It is foot. I don't, I don't think this will take very long. I think that's a corner. Kim Yung Jin, there's a Korean coach in the stand behind there, and he actually turned to him and asked his thoughts on it. Clearly got told, yes. That's the second phase. That's not a stick. That's it's that bit's irrelevant to me. It's the very first contact on the edge of the circle that, on the first replay there that to me looks like an absolute foot in the circle the foot is on the line so that's in the circle second phase ball popping up I don't think has anything to do with it see the two different touches there might be some stick grip contact but then to me it looks like foot yeah I have a decision for you yeah it was a defender's foot in the circle and Korea keep the referral Thanks, yeah. Mason gets a tick in the box. Correct decision. That's the first one for today. I got them all wrong <laughs> the day before last. So occasionally it's just one angle. You'll see four or five different angles. We've got what nine or ten cameras around the, the stadium here, and just one of them will give you the information that you need. Well, Jang has switched positions. He's now on the right castle, the right stopper. Young Jin is the man there, and at 18 is Cho Sukun. He's the left hand stopper. Where number six, I think it is Yang Ji Hun. Yeah, that would make sense as Sung Il has stepped back. Ji Hun, we haven't seen as much of him here. He was very effectual in the Asia Cup. Here he is, and well, that was oh, it took a deflection off a foot. I was going to say it nearly hit the corner flag. Otherwise, yeah, Balnofli's charged that down really well. Good, strong defensive running. Look at the stick position in front of the feet as he's getting as tight as he possibly can to protect his goalkeeper's left-hand side. The runners these days will set themselves to deny a certain space of the goal, so a goalkeeper essentially is covering a smaller area. Even that front shot, look how much Alnofli's offset. Jihun scored against Aman in the last game. Nearly does so again there, the glove of... And the Farley comes off in the process of the save. Well, out to the top, and as you can see, the first contact isn't clean. There's enough pace on it, though, to rip that glove off the goalkeeper's hand. All bouncing safely out of play, though, for Al Farley. Could have been interesting otherwise. 
Now a chance for Al Khazmi to cause some problems, but Korea deal superbly with it. Sung Il stepping all the way back to offer support. Now to Yang Ji Hun once more. The right back just puts a stick on it and then does decide to go forward. Young Jin in and out. Now Aman had a chance to break. Can't find Al Fazari. Korea then give the ball away. Immediately, Aman give it back. Not the neatest passage of play in this competition so far. It is, of course, the Hero Asian Champions Trophy of 2018. We have seven minutes and 20 left in the third quarter. And at the moment, and it's all locked up at one apiece. Korea took the lead. Aman immediately responded. Well, as that was going on, just looking at some of the stats we have on our screens, I was thinking that the turnover numbers, if I glance at them, would be really high, and they're actually not that high compared to some of the other games that we've had. Aman, the suggestion is they've only made 21 turnovers. Well, I've got to suggest I disagree with that in, in real time, because it feels like far more as they give away another penalty corner. Yeah, there was a game the other day where we were having two, two a minute from memory. 47 so far. Oh, this is just easy. This is a pick and a roll into a space. Just tucked under, not a lack of mobility. It's the agility, tired players, body and mind, more importantly. Similar's walked away once more, leaving Jiang and Ji Hun. Yang Ji Hun and Jiang Jong Hyun. Ji Hun left. None from five efforts for Korea so far. Coach Shin will be aware and won't be happy with that. It's going to Jang. Great save. Flash. That's brilliant goalkeeping. Absolutely stunning. The ball's fired in off that castle, low and flat. Awesome awareness. Out to the top. You can see it pulls round for the tip in. Brilliant as a goalkeeper. That first shot is going wide of the goal. So as the goalkeeper, he has to anticipate and understand he's still going to dive. Very, very difficult to do. Man looked to counter-attack after Sung Il had gone on a run, which interestingly was with the ball out in front of him on the backhand side. Stop there, this long drag around the feet, the whip to the forehand. That's the tip in, that's awesome. Great body position, super strength, trailing legs are flat, really well done. We have the ball I'm looking to find a way along the baseline. Alouan and Al Saidi were there in the way. So I'm a good umpiring there to uh, very clear communication. There was no questions to come back at him. That's a good way of being with your players. Yeah, you want to you want to show a degree of empathy through the game, and you build up those lines of communication. You get you create an understanding of where the lines are on a particular day, what the umpires are going to blow, the interpretation, and then when those lines are crossed, the umpires really clean, strong blow, direct communication to the players, so they know where they stand. That's all a player wants. Kim Jong Hoot trying to find a way down the line. Ji Hun, lovely slapping, oh that's hit the Korean player. Well Korea want to review this, the umpire immediately said no it's a foot. Green card given to Jong Jun Woo. And they are reviewing. I thought that hit the Korean player at the back post. Najmi, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Najmi? Yes. I give a free hit to defense for attacker foot inside the circle. But say he saying it's a PC. Can you check it for me? I'll check the whole situation. So Ampa Najmi is going to check the whole situation. We clearly saw her said, Anand said he gave this free hit for the lift into the circle. There's nothing wrong with that at all. I think. 
that passage of play to me is up off a defender. This is this has got perhaps the easiest penalty call we've seen probably all tournament. There's no danger with that. That's gone through. The lift hasn't caused anybody to flinch, particularly defensively. There's no danger there. It's that's then the bottom edge that unfortunately lifts the ball into the Korean attacker. That's Kim Jung Ho on the back post. To me, that's a penalty corner because of the lines that the ball comes across. That's then the lift. Umpire Anand actually was looking. Anand, yeah. I have a decision for you. Yeah. Penalty corner, the ball was high, danger. And Korea keep the reference. Keep the reference. Yeah. Right, thank you. As you say, Simon, an easy refer, although in real time it, like it just flashed across and Kim Jung Hoo kind of simple missed it and it hit him on the foot. But there was a reason, as we saw, and that's why we have the video referrals in hockey. Korea using it well at the moment. Yeah, and I think umpire Anand had been looking at Yong Yun Wo's card as he went off. There was a passive play that led to the card. And I think the umpire was just slightly focused on it, making sure he knew which player it was. And the play happened really quickly in front of him. It wasn't quite set for the outcome. Difficult split focus. Yang on the left, Jang on the right once more. In fact, it looks like Jang is going to be a stopper this time. And it will be that for Yang Ji Hun. Sung Il is the one on the right now. Versatility from Korea's number one drag flicker. Out it comes, it will be Ji Hun. Again, Al Nafal is there to act as the Amani brick wall. Oh, and Aman miss it, because that was all the way through. All it needed was a touch on the right. Out and stop dead, Yang doing very well. Al Nafal gets his body weight over his right foot enough. Difficult for him, because that's tucking him up slightly. As we see the replay, the black Thing in the middle of the circle is actually personal protection, a knee pad or something that's fallen off. Wind getting up here in Muscat. We saw rain, of course, at the start of the competition, three days on the trot, which caused much confusion for the commentary team who hadn't expected any rain at all. And rain if two years we turn up from London, it rains three on the spin. Cross in from Yong Jin. Back stick given. In fact, it was. Jing Wang, who was penalised. Well, they're certainly not going to rush their free hits tomorrow, are they? And there'll be all sorts of gamesmanship here. There'll be people, there'll be three players all signalling to the ball patrol, the, the ball boys and girls, to just, just roll the ball on for me. There'll be three or four on the pitch at times, I guarantee it. The insanity with it is there a player up here as well. But I don't think that makes much difference to them. I, I'm fairly certain that their tactical structure in a game like this, I'd appreciate if they were playing against a team within their same ranking group, so 25 to 35, they would probably then use that extra player, step out, be aggressive, more assertive. But these guys, this tournament, they've taken a bit of a beating at times. And I'm not sure they've got the legs to exploit the space. Heaviest loss for them in the competition was, of course, the opening game where they went down 11 nothing to India. Old India for a long time, though, in that one. First quarter, it was nil-nil. They've done that numerous times here. Pakistan, the only team that were really able to absolutely unpick them early on. Korea, of course, did score in the first quarter, but immediately were responded to by penalty corner of Ahmed al Nafali. Oh, Kazmi. Flip of a pass down the line to Alawati, who gives the ball away. Now Kazmi turns frustrated with his midfielder. Good ball. Alawati corner. R1. Get his feet out the way. And Korea are starting to get the penalty corners. They're eighth now. Yeah, if you look at the interchange, it's the two and three man movement. Defenders right. stepping off players because they have to because the ball falls free. Hyung Jiguan creating the opportunity for Korea. But the Amani defense is at sixes and sevens at the moment. Jihun's there once more. As is Jang. As Jin is there. It's going to be 
Drag flicker once more. Out it comes, it will be. Jang puts it back for Yi. Yang Ji Hun. Off it goes. Shin will be concerned at the moment. With his penalty corners at least. It's a classic spin. Jang does that very well to draw the number one. But look at the immediacy of the reaction. Brilliant defensive running from Al Saidi to just step forward on the forehand. Aggressive defense, step in hard. If we remember, however, Korea. Ji Guang loses his stick. Still an opportunity, but not for the save of Al Nafali. And then a swing and a clatter from Ji Guang. Well, Messi at best. The ball comes in the backhand. Good defending, gets enough for touch. Good goalkeeping. Steps down solid. And then Korea trying to get through. But look at the Omani attempts. Well, not sure it was the cleanest. And you wouldn't have been surprised at another penalty corner. Oh, Shibley. He's got Al Fazari ahead of him. Al Krasmi's a long way away at the moment, which makes Oman. Relatively easy to defend when they have the ball in those three because they're rather detached from each other. And roughly with the back stick. So it was given for. It's one of those annoying ones that like, you could see why it was given for a potentially swing and a miss, but it wasn't a miss. There was contact on the ball. So you have to perceive that umpire Hussein thought that hit the back of the stick. I just didn't see his signal. Lovely tackle. Alawati, Alawan getting forward for him. Here he is. Tries to, oh, to does well to turn Lee Sung Il and then rips the stick away. Oh, there's nothing. It's just two sticks that are caught in the middle of the pitch. There's nothing here. <laughs> That's harsh. Two players, look at the skill. Skill comes in field. It's just sticks caught with each other. There's absolutely nothing in that other than a free hit. I've got to say, I think the captain. Sung Il has been the most unlucky man this tournament for cards. He's had several, I think five or six, of which that I think is, un is just unlucky, really. But he's had three for his team teammates chirping. He sent off three times, once for his coach, two for his teammates. End of the third, he has had three greens, two yellow cards, fifth for the competition now. It remains at 1-1, and well, Lee Sung Il definitely unlucky there because uh, well, it really was a nothing challenge, just two sticks getting hooked up. Can El Nofli lead his team to fifth here in the fifth, sixth playoff? It's career one, Oman one here in Muscat. Well, the two teams have their last quarter break. Career have forced down the Farley into some useful saves. Korea will be disappointed with the number of penalty corners that they've had during the course of this. Oman going a little bit to sleep and allowing the ball to be clattered in towards the Omani goalkeeper. He's done exactly what he's probably not paid for. However, he's made some very, very good saves. Been in the right place at the right time. But for me, for Shin there talking, his, his concern has to be as an international team against a much lesser ranked opponent how many corners they have not converted. Well, Coach Shin was gutted a year ago when Korea missed out on qualifying for the World Cup. So here's Zaman, the former Pakistan coach, taking over since the Asia Cup in Dhaka. And he will be pleased with the performances Simon, with Farhad on the Farley in our shot, or was in our shot, how would you fancy Oman if it went to a shootout and, of course, the dreaded shuffles? Well, given how well he's played, and I've loved watching him because it's slightly unconventional at times, but he's been busy, he's been involved, whereas, as yet, Kim Yehyun, the Korean goalkeeper, with very little to do, you'd suggest he's possibly not quite as... I won't say warm, because he's definitely going to be warm, but has switched into the game as Al Nafali. My only concern for him is that his lack of relative experience in shootouts at this level might be his undoing, but you've got to back 
the more informed goalkeeper. Now, excuse me using the term in your day, but you, of course, mainly faced penalty strokes. I wholly faced penalty strokes. Faced I have them. never done a shootout. Which would you rather face? Um, as a goalkeeper, a shootout, because I, I feel the balance changed. By the time I, when I was, by the time I retired, the power of the athletes from the penalty spot, you, you, were, you were properly guessing. You were literally, oh, I'm just going to go that way and hope it hits me. It was, very, it was almost impossible to make a good save, whereas this, there is so much more complexity. There's so much more time. If you can just, in my head, it's always about, as I watch it, if you can just make the attacker take his full eight seconds or her full eight seconds, you give him a chance just to kick it. Jin, and again, Al Nafali, and then the swing and the miss coming from Kim Sung Q, who then was throwing everything he could at it. The kitchen sink, I think, came out at some point. Well, that's a good save for a defender again. How he's making saves when his defenders that time, Al Kazmi, absolutely stood in his way. He's seen it late, picked it. And career second phase, not able to finish. Now Ji Hun down the line, it went and off it goes as Cho tried to turn to take the space offered down the right-hand side. Here again is Lee Sung-Hoon, all the way over to the left-hand side. Change of angle for Korea. Well, Dan, what I do like is this, this play unfolds, and Korea have got such a massive amount of possession in their opponent's half. 80% well, of their 62% possession has been in the Amani half. As we look for another ball to be played in, Amana leaving a centre forward right up on the opponent's 25. It's fabulous to watch. They're quite happy to leave Al Fazari all the way up there and just stretch play. It's bold, but it does mean that a Korean defender has to stay back. And if they don't continually chat and get the lines right, who knows? One of those few rare through crash balls might get there. His career will remember that he scored against Mal Fazari in that Asia Cup. Hasn't scored here in the last three games. He'll take a penalty stroke, as we were talking about a second ago, against Malaysia. Youngster showing strong nerves against Haki Rachman. Good lead. And now space. he's in the D, and Al Wat, if he can find oh. him. No, he can't. There's both of us up here at the start of the game. That's got to come across. It's a great lead. Korea didn't get there at all. Unfortunately, it's a dreadful attempt from Al Lawati to get his hands around the ball and whip it across. Al Fazari stood unmarked on the penalty spot. Pressure on Al Lawati, though, wasn't just coming from the nearest man because the experienced Lee Sung Il had just stepped back inside to cut off the ball behind the defender. The closest defender. Man, with 11 and a half minutes to win this in normal time in the four quarters. No extra time, of course, just immediately to the 23 and the shootout. Brilliant cover defence. Unfortunately, the trigger not pulled for Korea. Opportunity yet again going away. Lee with the cross on the Farley. Has to be very aware. All the pace taken off it on the Farley. Yeah. The letter of the law, if you watch that, is the goalkeeper is allowed to deflect it deliberately over the baseline and not give away a penalty corner, but he's not allowed to play it. That's one of those ones that you think, I'd oh, be harsh if it was a corner, but the letter of the law suggests it possibly should have been. It wasn't a deflection, he did play forwards at it. All down the baseline. Spun across and Aman. Being very, very careful. Al Saidi put back in by Kyung Jin. Alawan trying to come away. Kyung Jin has it once more. That's a better cross. But then Alawati can come away no one is up ahead of him but Al Fazari who's way away on the left hand side and why he didn't try and get across to actually get ahead of the plate on the near side for his man I think the answer is he's absolutely <laughs> exhausted he's got nothing left he said in the first what two minutes he was looking heavy legged maybe he's carrying a bit of an injury but there was absolutely no effort to drive from the left wing across to offer a right side outlet year old on his 28th appearance 
show of career who we just saw is just a few years older at 33. Right arm, it all oh, has to be careful there. Picked up a couple of yellow cards earlier in the week in the same quarter. Didn't do his team any favours. And swings and misses. So it's against Pakistan. Those two yellows came. Oh, Al Lorne doing very well here, just to shield enough. Not sure he'd have got there. But stay, staying in the contest, really important, even if you do start to get tired. And Tahir has said the team aren't as fit as opponents. They've lost those men early in the competition. All that Oman have to do is stay in the contest, stay with the opponent, put a little bit of mental and physical pressure as best you can. Okay, so eight penalty corners for Korea. What Oman won't want to do is give away a penalty corner right towards the end because be the sort of time someone experienced like Jang would put something out the bag that deflects way over the top and the cameramen above the, the goal need to be careful I think that was landed in our truck out in the compound Oman are getting deeper and deeper and deeper every every minute that ticks past the front line of their press just drops another meter or two Give them the credit now, though. Korea with their high press, stepping one way. The Oman front three stepping the other, but it means the only outlet is to go over. On one. Wang's in the middle, and the Farley gets there, and then what a finish that is from Cho suk -hoon. I said he was experienced, and it really showed that. The opportunity comes back off the pads, and he puts it in the top corner with a plomp. It's 2-1 Korea. Oman play themselves into trouble. Unfortunately, they don't go long. They just put the ball in front of the goal. That is an awesome finish. I thought it had got an edge, but it falls very kindly. Cho goes first time across. It takes a defensive touch there to keep it in play. And then he absolutely puts a bat through it off his back foot in off the far stanchion. That doesn't touch anything. He absolutely rigs it. Cho Suku, 117 caps. Two goals now in the Asian Champions Trophy, both of them coming against the team that he's playing against this evening. That one might have to uh, go somewhere near the highlights package for goals of the competition. Just for the sheer quality of the finish. They just have to feel a little bit for Amman though, don't you? Because they've, they've, they've played well, yet it's the, it's, the, it's the plucky underdog type syndrome ranked. 33rd in the world and they've got themselves closer and closer to their opponents they've learnt over the course of this that goal wasn't about Korea's brilliance that was just about four defensive choices to come out from the back now Ji Hun there accidentally kicking the ball in a high pit passage of the pitch if that had been in the Korean 23 Simon do you think that that would have been given it's not deliberate hit his foot at Come yes. back to that. Rather yeah, we'll a terrible aerial for Oman, and now it's all career at the moment. Jigwang over on the right hand side. I oh, just have to be careful. We can hear that chat there. Number nine, number nine, and again stepping in Al Kazmi, just knocking the ball away. Goes from Jigwang. Played in the outside edge. What Amar need now is they need discipline. They desperately need to keep 11 men on the pitch because if not, they will just get pulled apart. Down the line goes Kim Jung Hoo. Right along the baseline, pulls it back out the Farley. How did he get a touch? That's a push. Penalty Surely. corner. I'm awfully asking why. I wouldn't review this. I, I no, me neither. I definitely wouldn't review it. Because this, if they review this, the one fear I would have is that earlier in the competition, a push in the circle very similar to this was given as a penalty stroke for denying an opponent possession. It didn't look like there was any doubt about the push. That's great goalkeeping. <laughs> How can you say it's not a push? You've got your hand on his back and you push him. If they'd reviewed this, this had penalty stroke written all over it. Brilliant bit of goalkeeping yet again. 
but I'm not sure how Al Nofli can say that's not a foul. Ji Hun on the left, Jang on the right, Sung Il behind, not a bad three flickers for Korea. Nofli. So Al Nofli has been sent off. Sent off with a green card for breaking the law or for not being ready within the time limit. It's a clear set of rules on that, unfortunately. And it comes to the left hand side, Ji Hoon. Goal. Lovely finish from him. Crisp to the right of the goalkeeper. And well, Amana with five minutes 22 left. Two down. Well, without a dedicated number one runner, you look how wide the number one runner there is compared to the line that Al Nofli has been running. It leaves that side of the goal absolutely gaping. It's a well-executed flick. You look at the body shape. It is so low and so powerful. That's right in the right-hand attacking side. Yang delivering it with precision because, unfortunately, Aman have given him the space to fire it into. Three goals for him. In the competition. Romana back underway with just over five minutes left to go. Can they restore? I was going to say some pride. They've played with a lot of pride in this competition. I don't think it's rest restoring some pride. I think they've had exactly that in every performance here with a depleted squad the goalkeeper comes rushing out and now Fazar is penalized for being too close to the aerial ball coming down as Jan got underneath it's confirmation of the scorers Young Jin Suk and then Ji Hun for Korea Ahmed now on a Farley scoring immediately after Young Jin had scored for Korea currently have their captain Al Nofli sat on the well the naughty step essentially the chair by the technical delegates bench and it's so frustrating for a coach when that happens because it's wholly avoidable it's like when a player gets a green and then talks themselves into a yellow you just go well that's that's controllable you, you just don't need to be doing that so Al Nofli it's it's a 40 second timer if you're not ready within the 40 seconds, then somebody gets a green card and he's got it as captain. It's, it's a very, very black and white it's binary. So to do that and make those mistakes is what will frustrate to hear so much the coach because you just it just was unnecessary. Down the line it goes, picked up well. And then just run off the pitch. Play the number five. You Han Jung. And just his 25th cap. Now that Korea have backed off their press, Aman happier to play it round. A conventional back three, a deep central defender giving the point at the back. It means they can just work the ball up that little bit harder. Now Fazari steals off Jang. The turn, the shot oh, is hit, post. the post has come back, it's still going for Al Shibli. Yeah, and he hits the other post, wow. Well. <laughs> well, there's your luck, Al Quasmin, Al Shibli. Oh, how disappointing, desperately wanting Amar to get it. The roll on the backhand, crash through, there's the post, spins onto forehand. Well done, good advantage, and here's the outside edge of the other post. And at the other end, it goes wide from the Korean shot. Well, can't take advantage and can't make it 4-1. Well, this is the back end. Does very well to get round the goalkeeper in the first instance. Realising that there's obstruction coming. Rolls round the defender. Good advantage from Hassan into the umpire. Straight back through the goalkeeper. Let's cut the ball in half on that front edge of that post. I'll show you the pushed backwards by the number 18, Cho Sukun. Nofli, who's returned from his two-minute enforced break. Corner, Amar 
one. Can they get a goal back in the last one minute 45? We wait to see. Here's a man who's got a lot of positives to focus on the next Amani camp. Now what Al Nofli's asking for there is the penalty corner, but umpire very clearly saying that the back stick, there was a back stick, but it wasn't a deliberate foul. That's the only thing. Well, that's horrible, though. Come on, done well to get away from that with no cards. Have they? they? Might not have done. Oh, in fact, it's the goalkeepers who are changing. Kim heading off, and on in his place, of course, comes Kim Gilm Jung, the incredibly inexperienced. And I'm sure the last one minute and 14 seconds are going to game give him huge amounts more experience. Four caps came on in the last minute against Malaysia when they lost 4 2. So he's going to play a total for his airfare of two minutes. Went to the Asia Cup, Gilm Jung. That's not a great pass, giving it away. That's oh, it's just scrappy and ugly. Well, the whistle can't come soon enough, really, for a man hit. Yes, they might have hit the post twice inside the last five minutes, which actually happened in within three seconds of each other. But the legs have gone, and who can blame them with 14 players available? Rear 3 1 at the moment it has been. Well won in the end by Karit. Jigwank pulls it back. Lovely pullback by him. Oh, another post. Another post and out it comes. The shot was from Kim Hyung Jin. Al Nofli yet again. Look at the middle of the circle where Al Nofli commits. He's committed a miss. He's gone for that with everything he's got. And it's hammered across the goalkeeper at the top right-hand corner. Did well to duck out, but will get his helmet out of the way there, Alvin Farley. 3 1, it finishes. Career have enough in the end to see off a plucky Oman yet again. Well, Jigwang showing how much effort it takes to beat the number 33 team in the world. Yung Jin, Cho, and Ji Hun push Korea past Oman, whose goal came from Ahmed Al Nafali. Fired Al Nafali once more busy. Oman can be delighted with their work here on home soil in Muscat but in the end it finishes at full time rear three Amman one career take fifth Amman six well Simon career will be pleased to get over the line but it was a difficult game for them well to be honest that's all they felt they did that's all I felt they did they they had so many opportunities, but it just wasn't precise enough. The goal itself was scrappy to open the scoring. As you said, it didn't last very long. The ball was into the circle. It gets an, an edge from Tahil in the first instance, a top edge over the top, and then tapped in at the back post from Kim. Then the corner, however, that Amman responded to, rather from, was, was executed perfectly. It's the long drag in. Kept low just off the turf enough pace that it turns Kim's stick in his hand Korea then with a vast number of penalty corners of their own the slip move saved on the line but still that rear guard defensive action for Oman holding firm at this point well trapped and slipped all the way stepping through and then cleared by Al Luan on that left hand post and at this point to here pretty happy I should think with his team Korea then just really started to turn the screws. But the goalkeeper, who's been outstanding for the entire tournament, holding firm, staying big. And then Amman digging themselves a great big hole. Comes across, and that is an exceptional finish. Smashed into the roof of the net. The ball falls kindly, but the power put a bat through it into the top corner by Cho Sukun. And then a penalty corner. Unfortunately, Aman again creating the problems for themselves. Captain had been sent off for taking too long in the defensive unit. It opened up the left-hand side of the goal. And there was the finish. Career got 15 shots in him. Aman just three. They scored one of them. Circle entries 23 to 5. Career win 3-1. 79% possession in the opponent's half for career while well, they had so much time in the Amani half in the end though just the three goals one penalty corner from nine coach Shin 
Well, he will go away from here with his team having finished fifth with a lot to look at and a lot to work on. But six more games of international hockey in the legs of the youngsters. He won't be so concerned with the Yang Ji Huns and the Lee Sung Ills. They've played a lot of international hockey. It's more the young stars that he will be looking at and how they can develop into top class international hockey players. We're going to now go down after Korea's 3-1 win to Charlie Broom, who has the post-match presentation. Thank you very much. Welcome to the post-match presentation for the fifth, sixth playoff match between Korea and Oman. First of all, I'd like to thank Hero Motor Corp for their kind sponsorship, without which this award would not be possible. I'd also like to wel welcome our dignitaries to the presentation party, Mr. Madian Ahmed Bet uh, Hadva, board member of Oman Hockey Association, who will present the glass shield. And the check will be presented by Mr. Taib Al Shaidi, the treasurer of the Oman Hockey Association. The award for the hero man of the match goes to Oman's number eight, Ahmed Al Nofli. And he will receive a check for 150 US dollars from Hero Motor Corp. Congratulations to Ahmed. Well, Ahmed Al Nafali is impressed throughout the competition, but finally tonight gets his goal to cap an excellent competition. Uh, he's just, again, played across a number of lines. There hasn't been a structure. He's, his tackling's been fantastic. He's got in the right place at the right time. And then when he's given an opportunity, and he hasn't had many from the top of the league, you've got to say, they've not had many penalty corners. He finally finds that bottom corner with a really well-executed set play. But he's been more than that. It's not a one-trick pony. It's across lines and across positions. And he's driven and supported the players around him so well over the course of the whole week. And coming up in, well, not long at all, Pakistan versus Malaysia. The first semi-final of the Hero Asian Champions Trophy 2018 here in Muscat. Those two, well, they had a very, very close match at the end of the pool, although it was rather lifeless. Who will make their way into the final? Aman do themselves proud once more, but in the end just run out of legs against Korea, who were clinical. It finishes career three, Amman one, Korea take fifth in Muscat. <laughs>